I seek the blessings of Sri Satya Sai Baba before I address this gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries on the dais, uh, we are truly delighted with such uh, eminent and prominent personalities in the audience. Because I remember the days when I was a student, to enter a vice chancellor's office was quite a challenge because it was a tough task. So I think to the students, we have 50 vice chancellors in the front, so all the best. But uh, thank you for coming. We are just the hosts here, and we're grateful to the Association of Universities for uh, taking our venue as the hosting venue because it's truly an honor for so many eminent people to be gathered under one roof. I was truly delighted when uh, Professor Chande spoke because uh, it was a deep insight into the history of education historically and uh, from a significant point of view from the Indian context. And I think there is a lot of learning from those sentences if one analyzes those sentences uh, and looks and puts them into the context of today's traditional education, I think and we can really improvise the current educational systems. India has produced Mahatma Gandhi, India has produced Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, India has produced Baba Sahib Ambedkar, India has produced Tilak, India has produced many great people. Today the IITNs, the engineers, the doctors, recently the private university graduates have been fueling the economies of the world, whether it's the United States, whether it's Europe, whether it's the far reaches of Australia. And I think this is an indicator of where Indian talent is heading. Today I don't want to take up too much time talking on leadership because there are so many eminent people talking about leadership. So I'm quite eager to hear most of them. But I think in an overall context, we look at the Indian education system, we see that it is a great and unique system. It just needs to be finely tuned so that it can be taken to the next level. We spoke about prominence taking India to the next level. Often Indians talk about what the past was, what the India of the future will be. But I think we have to look at the India of the present. That is our immediate need. And I think there is a huge gap that exists in the educational system in terms of infrastructure, in terms of manpower, and in terms of enrollments. Because there is a gap that exists mainly because there is no infrastructure in the country, and primarily because students coming into this infrastructure cannot afford this education. So both those need to be bridged. And I think a fine balance between private enterprise, public enterprise, and the government can bridge this system. It is a huge, huge educational sector. Many foreign countries are looking to come into India. And they are primarily looking at it as a market. And I feel that many Indian educational institutes also have an opportunity to grow. Uh, Vijay, of course, spoke very passionately about my father. And he uh, took off most of the things that I was going to address to the gathering. But just to, uh, <laughs> uh, just to elaborate on that, is, uh, here is Dr. D.Y. Patel, who was a villager from the village of Amba. He grew up in this great country to become the governor of Tripura today. So here is a country which offers an opportunity to the smallest of smallest person. It's not possible in any part of the world, barring maybe the United States or some other countries. But India truly is a great democracy. As Indians, I think we need to understand the democracy that we have, respect it, and take it to the next level. I think we need to be a little indebted to our country because in today's time, in the pursuit of perfection, we don't look at how people are suffering, how people are needy, and we need to look at these causes as well. So truly, I think education, in a sense, should go back to the Guru Shishya days, take the best of the East, take the best of the West, and create such talent that is truly caring and nurturing for the world. We need students that come out of the system that care not only for India, that care for humanity, and take the world to the next level. Uh, Professor Chandi again spoke about the Guru-Shishya relation and I truly feel that that relation should come back between the teacher and the student because today there is a big disconnect between the teachers and the students, the children and the authorities as such. So I think in every tree under India there was an educational institute. Similarly, we have to income knowledge, we have to give knowledge, we don't have to give degrees, we don't have to give just education in terms of traditional sciences. We have to give the true knowledge that can take that person to the next level. We have to create a child who is truly emerging, who can offer that knowledge to other people. Shiksha in Sanskrit when actually translated means learning at every moment. And I think that's the true sense of education. 
that education is a process that you learn at every moment. It's not about when you are graduating, you do a four-year degree program, you become an engineer, you get employed somewhere. It's a constant process. So to all the teachers here, to all the academicians here, it, we urge, this is the policy of this university, that we have to create fine leaders out of our children who come out of these institutes. I have truly been inspired by many of the uh, academicians. I remember Thomas Patado, who was my science teacher in Hillbrand High School where I studied. And today also I fondly remember him because I feel and the values that he taught me remain with me today. I remember the teachings of so many individuals. We have amongst us Dr. Vijay Kole who sits here. He's inspired me on many occasions. Professor Sable is missing today, but there are such fine academics who truly inspire for the cause of education. And I think we need to build that character into the educational system of this country. We are very fortunate that we have an opportunity today to take this further. We truly are at an emerging time with the use of technology, with the kind of advances that science is making, I think truly India can join the global village because so many parts of India don't have access to education. Through technology, we can bring education to the doorsteps of the needy, to the doorsteps of the poor. Briefly, a topic was discussed about corruption in education. And I think uh, corruption in education is also a very big thing because the menace of capitation and donation that plagues the educational system should once and for all be given. Because it is time that educational institutes reform, it is time that educational institutes understand and stand in pride that these are transparent, clear systems offered and provided to offer quality education only. And I think there is a very easy way to sort of get rid of the system. Deregulation, deregulation, deregulation. And I think it's very important that deregulation is taken in the right stride. Currently, we are seeing a lot of changes coming into the educational system. I think it's very heartening that the ministries are taking a tremendous interest in sort of getting the private sector involved. We have uh, Professor Manta sitting with us. He's the very dynamic chairman of the AICT because under his able leadership and guidance, there have been everlasting changes that have been extremely beneficial to institutes such as ours and others. So I think able leadership with able change will truly create a lot of change in the educational system of India. Currently, we are aware of the right to education that has just been implemented in primary education. And we feel it is a fantastic system that has been given by the government. Because 25% of the poor students can get into an educational system, whether it's an international school, whether it's a CPSC school, whether it's a SSE school. So it is an amalgamation of society. The poor will study with the rich. There is no diversity in that. There is, there is no sort of uh, a feeling of uh, dismemberment because there is the two Indias. One is the India which does not have access to this education. There is the other India which has access to this education. So I think the RT is an excellent bridge to get these two Indias together. And I think we should welcome it with open arms. In fact, the I RT should also be implemented in the higher education system. Because where will the poor of this country study? Dada, my father, always keeps saying that these are not the kind of educational institutes that I desire. It is always my intention and my desire that educational institutes should be affordable and be available to the needy and deprived of this country. So I think we must all work in that direction as academics, as students, as teachers, as leaders, and as a society as large. We must stop criticizing the systems. We must embrace systems which are positive. We must look to create positive change. And I think it's very important to understand that. Dr. James Thomas is very nicely dressed in his uh, non-civilian fatigue. So I think uh, I would like to say a little about Dr. James Thomas, because since he's been the vice chancellor of this university, he has gotten a lot of changes in this university. I think he's been an outstanding leader. He has taken the university's public profile to a new level. I think today's event as well, a lot of efforts were put in by Dr. Thomas and this university, the team members of this university are particularly grateful for the contribution of Dr. Thomas. So I would not like to, again like to take too much time. I'm a follower of Sri Satya Sai Baba. He says, and I quote, I always end my speech with that. He says, there is only one language. That is the language of the heart. He says there is only one religion, the religion of love. And he says there is only one caste, the caste of humanity. Thank you very much. God bless you.